Welcome to the very first episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings for 2024. I am Brendan Dando of the Four Finger Discount Network, of course, joined by the man himself, producer Chris. How are you, man? Hello, I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Tired. Tired, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm great. <laughs> so basically, what's going on here is, you know, we've been away for a while because, you know, Jim's been on, on holiday, as he deservedly so, over in South Africa. So Jim's on South African time, I'm on Australian time, and Chris is on LA time. So... Where, what time is it right now for you, Chris, where you are? It is 1.30 in the morning. Wow. Oh. Wait, it's usually me having to get up at 1.30 in the morning, so I'm, I'm actually quite happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't... Uh, it's 11 in the morning where Jim is, and it's uh, about 8 at night here, but we're going to get this done. I'm very, very excited. Jim, how you been, mate? Superb. It's another day in paradise, and I do mean paradise. In fact, do I dare do this? Can I try and do this again? Should I show everybody where I am? Uh, can I just do that Let's do real, it. real quick? Yes. It won't take long. Jim is turning his I'm laptop turning around laptop so we can around. see. I mean, does that look? I, I can't. It's great tell. for that for the audio, but uh, we, we, let's describe what we're seeing here, Chris. We're seeing crystal blue waters. We're seeing okay, yes. Margaret sunbathing on the beach. Yes, yes. Uh, we're seeing uh, what else we're seeing? <laughs> yeah. Did, did you see that shark come up and take yeah, out? Yeah. Wow. Right on the beach, huh? The shark just took out a family of four. Uh, I hope you got that. Uh, oh well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Good for um. Good for the radar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good for the roughage. Anyway, yeah. There are a lot of sharks there, huh? I, I made that up, so it's okay. I don't think there's as many dangerous animals in South Africa as there are Australia. Maybe in the safari there might be, but I feel like Australia is known as like the world's deadliest place when it comes to the animals. And they're not necessarily big animals like lions right. and rhinos and hippos. They're just you know little redback spiders. They might be the size yeah. of a tent, a little nickel, but they will kill you if they bite you. Right. And, and don't you have shrews that eat lions down there? I'm pretty sure I remember something Probably. about that. Probably, yeah, yeah. Do, well, I, I I did see a Tasmanian devil last time down there. You did, yeah. And they are angry. They are pissed. And you know what is really astonishing to me is the first time I heard an, a Tasmanian devil, an actual Tasmanian devil, and it went, Bleh! and I thought a buddy of mine was messing with me, a sound engineer, and he put me in there, and I said, oh come on, that, that's who he goes. Dude, this is National Geographic, and he hit it again. And, he, and, it, and it sounded just like the Tasmanian Devil cartoon. And I went, "Damn, you know." And there, and he's just walked around all pissed off, and it looked just like Taz, uh, you know, life imitating art, I guess, right, or something, art imitating life. <laughs> Somebody was imitating something. Did he say <laughs> as well? Or? No, he did not. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> no, he didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has tuned into the show this week. Thanks to everyone who has taken the time to um to rate and review us on our Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you haven't already done so, please check us five stars. And leave us a few kind words. It does help us out a lot in spreading the word about the show. If you've got any friends that haven't heard about the show, let them know about it. Tune in with Jim Cummings. And don't forget, you can also support us on Patreon for exclusive content as well. But, well, it's been a long time since we've done a show. I feel like it's been oh, at least a month or two. You know, we take the Christmas mm -hmm. break as well. So a lot's happened. How was um how was the Christmas for both of you? We'll start with you, Jim. How was your Christmas? Oh, superb. You know, another day in paradise. We went and uh what what did we do? Actually I took a couple notes. We um uh, kinda went around to uh, had a Christmas brunch at the Victoria and Albert Wharf, yep. which is still there, and it was wonderful. Uh went on a safari. It was awe inspiring, you know, seeing uh, all our all our furry woodland creatures. And it was, uh, it's just fantastic. You know, Africa, you got to love it. Everything came from here. So you were in Africa for Christmas. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very traditional Christmas, right? You're sitting around in, in the bottom yeah. of the world. It was, it was the, not the North Pole, closer to the South. What time did you wake up, Margaret, to open your presents? Um, let's see, um, five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did Santa bring you anything special this year? Uh, yes, uh, an, an incredible view. I think I just showed you. It was, yeah. It's well <laughs> worth it. That's yeah. all we needed, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's well worth whatever you're paying for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot cheaper here, so come on down. But Chris, um, how, how was your Christmas, man? It was good. I uh, I was back home in LA with uh, with my brother. My brother was out here visiting, but I, I got home like uh, on the 23rd from Japan. And I actually have something to show everybody oh, here we go. from Japan Ooh. that the viewers might be interested. Okay, let's get it. What oh, is it? What here is we he go. He's walking off now. He's coming back with something. Um, it, it better be good. We've talked it up. It, 
it's good. So okay. in Japan, they go nuts for Winnie the Pooh. And here I found a Winnie Pooh, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger face mask. It was in really? a beauty salon. And it's like a face mask. I'm showing the camera now for those listening. Hold it up to us so we can see it's it a, too. <laughs> yeah. Winnie the Pooh and Tigger face oh, mask. Oh, wow. Wow, wait. Boy, both of them, huh? Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, mask hair number one, and then a bunch of Japanese writing. 2.5 billion masks have been sold for five years. Wow. wow. Jim, I'm yes. hoping, I'm hoping yeah. you're getting a cut of this money. Yeah, I only get a nickel. <laughs> So I'm I'm down to my last 200 million and on that. I don't know if we've I don't know if we've said it on the podcast or not before, but Winnie the Pooh generates more merchandise income than Mickey Mouse. Oh, I think you may have told me that. Yeah, yeah that's crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I have that's, known that. You never would you wouldn't think that, but then when you really th when you do really think about it, you go, you know what? I see I talk about and see a lot more of Winnie the Pooh than I do Mickey Mouse these days. You know, it's just Winnie the Pooh is yeah. just everywhere. I think Winnie the Pooh is the defining character when it comes to, you know, uh, nurturing and just remembering your childhood and sort of like the safe zone and the comfort zone. I think Winnie the Pooh is like the defining character for that, don't you think? Yeah, I I actually mm -hmm. do think that. I, you know, I, and nothing to do with me, but there is a, a sort of a famous story in, in my community here. Wayne Allwine, God rest his soul, he was Mickey Mouse for, gosh, 30-some years. And his wife, Rusey Taylor was Minnie, mm. it, you know, in real life. Mm. And uh, Wayne used to get a kick out of telling me this story because he was, uh, uh, which is some something of a Disney tradition, that uh, Mickey was also an employee of Disney. Like Walt Disney was the first Mickey Mouse. So he was really associated with Disney. And um, so therefore, Wayne Allwine, uh, he also worked at Disney and he was an animator, an incredible animator. And um, he was walking down the hall one day and Michael Eisner, former CEO of Disney, walked up to him and said, Wayne, Wayne, I just want you to know that Winnie the Pooh far outsells Mickey Mouse and then walked away. <laughs> and and he goes and I'm just standing there and I I mean what am I supposed to do self flagellate you know what do I do how, how do I stop how do I fix that I you know so and I said what'd you do and he goes I just went back to work I said oh okay well yeah. there you go <laughs> so uh, I was gonna say did do? he ever speak to you again <laughs> yeah 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 we were still buddies <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah who'd have thought it. Uh, and you know what? I'll speaking take of it. outselling, I have one more thing from Japan, and this is actually Jim's Christmas gift. I haven't oh, seen Jim since yeah. since Christmas. He's been in Africa, but I, you know, you like these le Letterman jackets. Oh yeah! Wow! And I found oh, this wow. Winnie the Look Pooh Letterman jacket. If you can see that on on yes. there, Pooh Pooh on the oh, front. Oh man! And then on the back. Oh. And then you got Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet, all on the back. Eat honey, think. It says eat honey, drink. Uh, eat honey, think, think sunny. sunny. Oh man, thank you, eat ladies honey, and gentlemen. Sunny. Christopher Judge shooting, scoring. And matter of fact, when you get off the when you get off the um when you get off the plane in Japan in Tokyo, mm -hmm. all over the airport they just have advertisements. And I was trying to find this poster because they if anybody's listening that's in Japan somehow or visiting Japan. There was like these limited edition Winnie the Pooh and Tigger posters that were in Japanese. Oh, wow. And they were Disney, like Disney official. It was advertised in the theme park out there, Disneyland Tokyo. And I was trying to find the posters and I couldn't find them anywhere, but they looked so cool. Oh, wow. But yeah, they're they're big fans. Oh, that's great. Big fans yeah, well, I knew that. I knew that about, uh, I can't think of the, the skater who years ago was out there in, in, in the Olympics, right? And uh, a young man from Japan, and he was a Winnie the Pooh fanatic. And every time he'd win uh, or do a really good showing, the whole ice was covered in little three-inch Winnie the Pooh dolls. They would throw them all over. They would just oh, really? cover the ice with little teeny <laughs> Winnie the Poohs. And they'd slow down. They'd have to send out the crew to get them all off the ice so people didn't break their neck. Oh, God, tripping over poo. <laughs> I slipped on some poo. Before you be, before you became Winnie the Pooh, Jim, what was it a big like? Was it a big merchandise seller? Do you know? What was it a? Because I know they sort of they reinvented Winnie the Pooh with the new adventures when you sort of joined up and became yeah. the voice. But 
Was Winnie the Pooh a big brand at that point? I don't think it really was, was it? Uh, no, no, it wasn't at all. Um, they, I, I'm trying to think. I think it was like a, well over a decade since they had, uh, because they, they won uh, the Oscar for an animated short because they yeah. put together those three, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, Day for Your, you know, put those three together to, and then they won the Oscar. And then he went away for 20 years. For, I, I I don't yeah. know why I was gr- glad they did because it gave me a chance to grow up. I always I've always said that, but uh, yeah, had they kept on going there, I I don't know who knows. But but it certainly whetted the appetite for for uh, Mo Poo, more Pooh and Country Company Hundred Acre Wood, and yeah. at that point that Disney and uh, ABC were not the same company, so ABC went to Disney and said, "Can we do put up a." The new adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and they go, oh, sure, let's do that. And we all had auditions, and there we go. What would be your favorite Christmas movie to watch? For me, I love Muppet Christmas Carol and probably Home Alone 2, movie mm-hmm. panel number two. But what about you guys? Favorite Christmas movie? Well, Pooh has a couple, but that's not that's not fair. You know, It's a Wonderful Life, yeah. I think, is still way, way up there. What about you, Chris? Favorite Christmas movie? Mine's actually, it's uh, a Die Hard. Yeah, yeah. there oh, you yeah. go. <laughs> that's true it's a christmas movie yeah there's always that big debate of is it a christmas movie and it's like well if it's at christmas then yes of course it's a christmas movie yeah <laughs> the dreaded elf is in there too i think yes yeah yeah <laughs> but you mentioned before jim that you've been in a couple of christmas specials did you always enjoy doing the christmas specials of the sh- various shows that you're a part of or the christmas movies because did, oh, did sure. they feel different to the normal show because the christmas specials always very wholesome the christmas specials aren't they well, yes, and and also they're they're usually done in spring, so you don't feel Christmassy at all. Yeah, you know, you know it's like yeah. at, forget about it. You know, you know, thinking in Christmas it just doesn't doesn't seem right in March. <laughs> yeah. So what do you what do you do to get into the Christmas zone then? <laughs> oh, I, I I put put ashes in my stocking, coal in my stocking. That, yeah. You know that, that <laughs> just like the old days. <laughs> Just like it was when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. I, uh. I need a moment. Okay, I'm back. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very sed- sentimental. Can you remember the first really good Christmas present you got as a kid? Like, can you remember the first present that you both were just so excited for that you still remember to this day? For me, it was getting the uh, the PlayStation 1, you know, the, 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 mm. the video game console. That was that was for me. I couldn't believe it, you know. But what about you guys? What, what was your first big Christmas present that to this day you still remember opening it up? I still have it. What is it? Uh, well, it's a Johnny Reb cannon. It's uh, it's that one in the in the office. You look in there, it's that, that little cannon on top, that toy cannon, Christopher. That's it. Oh, let me see if let me see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, go get it. Yeah. So how old were you when you got that? Um gosh, I don't know, early grade school. Early grade school. Something like that. And it was a it was a Johnny Reb cannon. And Johnny Rebel, that that's what that meant. Yeah, Johnny Rebel and uh uh let's see, Johnny. You ma was the rebel. He's the ba bum bum. And he, he was uh Nick Adams was the rebel. And uh, and that was a TV show, and they just put that out, and it shot little plastic, uh, you know, toy plastic cannonballs at you, and it still works. So, you know, life is good. No way. Yeah. Right. What about you, Chris? Mine was also the the PlayStation One, Sony was PlayStation really? One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and the Nintendo sixty four, I think, was. Oh yeah. yeah. My two, yeah, my two like. Oh man, me and my brother went nuts. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the YouTube video of the Nintendo sixty four kid? I have not. No. Oh, you will have to watch that once we finish recording. It will just bring you so much joy. It's just this kid in like nineteen ninety six getting a Nintendo sixty four for Christmas, and he just like screams and he's jumping in the air, and it's just that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it was that. Were you a, a child actor in that one? Is that what you're saying, Brent? Oh. <laughs> were you uh I wish. yourself <laughs> oh, okay but yeah but the christmas special so you but you've been in like you know just the you know goof troop christmas special and dark mm. christmas special but you also done like christmas movies as well so i was thinking maybe next christmas we should do or maybe even before then if people want to hear it we'll do a review of like is a merry poo year that's one of the ones i, I believe you oh, may yeah. have even voiced eeyore in that one as well i think someone's really? that you voiced eeyore in that one i don't i, I don't someone think wrote so. a comment on the post saying you voiced eeyore and i thought well, i hmm. never knew that I didn't, I, hmm. Well, the interweb 
knows everything, but uh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Doesn't ring because uh, you know Peter Cullen would have been it. Yeah, Peter Cullen would have would have been uh, Eeyore at at that time. I think. You know, we've had a few as mm. at, at the years as the years went on. Uh, you know, like Brad Garrett was Eeyore in the, the last movie, Christopher yes. Robin. And, uh, but back then it was P- Peter Cullen and AKA Optimus Prime. Optimus. I mean, when those Transformer movies came around, that just must have been an absolute goldmine for Peter. I mean, who would have thought oh, like, yeah. they'd become the, big, the huge success that they became? Man, good for him, you know, right? You know, I, it was funny because we were doing one of the iterations of uh, Pooh then. I think it was my friends Tigger and Pooh. And they were talking about the industry. Oh, they're talking about you know, they're, they're going to do a Transformer movie. And we're all going, well, they better use Peter. They better use Frank. They better, use, you know, going down the line, Neil and all the guys, you know, Jess Arnell, you know, they better use him because, you know, it's Hollywood casting. They, you know, they're always thinking, well, you know, this, yeah. this guy's the one that got us to the party, but we're not going to use him. We're going to get Jack Black or some, you know, some st- stupid thing like that. And um, when they, uh, it, it, when, Peter came to a session. He goes, "Well, I'm Optimus Prime," and and we're going, "Yeah, yeah," you know. <laughs> that was my bad, my uh, lame duck Peter uh, Cullen impression, by the way. And and we were all, it was like, yes, you know, the good guys scored one. And of course, it, you know, the franchise just lit up. Now they're fighting hedgehogs. They use or- Jess Harnell as uh, one of the characters too, as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He was um, Ironhide, maybe. I yeah, Ironhide. I, I think it's Ironhide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. And uh, and I was a couple of them, but not in the movies, just in the the goofy <laughs> series, in the TV shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just lovely though that you sort of, as you described in the past, though, that the voice acting community, for the most part, ninety nine percent of the time. They, they want to support each other. You, oh, you, sure, you yeah. get the sense that like a lot of actors would be jealous if someone else got the gig and they didn't. But with voice acting, it's like, no, come on, man. We, we're rooting for you. You can get this. And like everyone was happy for him. It's just so lovely to hear. Yeah. Well, especially one like that. I mean, you, you know, because, and I've said this before too. I said, you know, they wouldn't have been making the movie if the TV show wasn't popular. The TV show sold right. the movie. It wasn't the other way around. And so if it wasn't for Peter Cullen up there and Neil Ross and, and Frank Welker and just on and on, uh, you know, Jennifer Darling, who else? Sue Blue, you know, on and on and on. If, it, if they weren't doing a good job, they wouldn't have wanted to make a movie about them. So why would you get someone else to try and be them when they already are them? Are you listening, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh no, comment there. But yeah, so yeah, we all had a good Christmas. That's good. But now, yes. I, what's funny is I um, you you've I've done some research. You've voiced Santa Claus in various <laughs> things. Oh yeah, Jim. So you've voiced Santa in you know, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. Uh, one in particular, and I posted it on your social media. Follow oh. Jim Jim Cummings Acme or at Jim Cummings Pod, right. where you voiced him in the Flintstones Fruity Pebbles commercial. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I remember that. Now, ho, 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 ho. so many people did not realize that was you. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I always I always get a little uh, worried when when somebody asks me to do Santa because it sounds like a bad Ed McMahon impression from the old Johnny Carson uh, Tonight Show days. Oh, oh, you are correct, sir. You know, um, so you know, I'm I'm a little shy about doing it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it comes out. And for a long time there, maybe like ten years in a row. Uh, for a TV commercial or a radio commercial, I ended up being a, a Santa for some store or some, you know, shoe polish or something, you know, it, it didn't matter. But I was, you know, for about 10 or 12 years there in a row, I, I, got, I was an annual Santa somewhere. Did you ever dress up as Santa for your kids? Uh, no, nope, nope, nope. No, but I did the Easter. I think Bunny. Chris is dropping a hint that he wants you to dress up as Santa for next Christmas. Yeah, but no. <laughs> and actually, you know what? All I have to do is let this grow out. I think I'm there. Hand me a pillow. Yeah. Give me, give me the right hat. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm there. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you know, we're fresh out of dark gray. We're, we're getting, we're heading to the whites. Okay. All right. 
Wait, I'm sorry. I have, I have a short little story yeah. that I just have to share because I think it's really funny. But my dad, my dad's black, and one year he dressed up as the Easter Bunny. I know it's not Christmas, uh-huh. but he dressed up as the Easter Bunny, and we're all little. Oh, God, please tell me you have pictures. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> and me and all my siblings, we started hysterically laughing because we knew there was no way that the Easter Bunny was black. <laughs> we see this big black Easter Bunny <laughs> running through the yard. That's pretty fabulous. And all those little kids are just dying laughing. Oh, my God. That's great. And I think that was, that was the day that we realized that Easter Bunny and all those other mythical creatures are... I'm not going to say it for the for the kids listening. <laughs> but... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that that reminds me though, Jim, you have a you have a good collection of Santa dolls though, don't you? Really? Yeah, yeah, and not bad, I think. You know, every year, you know, break them out, of course not this year, but yeah, you know, really nice ones. You know, that cost like 10, 15 yeah. bucks each, easy. No, but they're nice and then I put them on the steps going up the steps. Yeah, I remember. I remember visiting years ago yeah. and seeing all the different, and they're all they're all different races. Yeah. I remember an Indian Santa and Black Santa, Chinese yeah, Santa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all 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 from around the world. Martian Santa, absolutely. One of my favorite Christmas decorations we have is that um my nan Marlene she passed away just before COVID, so it would have been three four years ago now. But she used to have this Santa Claus that it's like a, an animatronic one, so you push the button and it just plays the music, the jingle bells and things like that. So mm. when she passed, because it always reminds me when I was a kid, I used to always love pushing it at Christmas time. She always had it on the mantle. So every year now, I bust out her Santa and put it on the mantle. And now my kids enjoy playing it. So it's just sort of a nice way of sort of oh, that's nice. keeping the tradition up with my yes. nan. You know, yeah. I like that stuff. That's beautiful. But yeah, so yeah, you voice various Santas. I was going to ask you though, so playing Santas in various different things, commercials or movies or whatever, do you tweak the voice or do you just have your stock standard Santa voice? I think it's pretty much stock standard Santa. Yeah. And it's always a, a chore to make sure it doesn't sound like Pete. You know, Pete, the, the big mean yeah. cat. From, <laughs> well, there you go, pal. You know, because it's, it's kind of in that neck of the wood. Well, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. you just have to keep it round. And instead of, <laughs> let me just strangle this little weasel over here. You know, we can't, we can't have Santa saying that. Speaking of you voicing in commercials, though, so I do another podcast with my wife about Friends, the one about Friends podcast, and we just did an episode called The One After the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. And at the start of that episode, yeah. there is a commercial for monkey shine beer mm-hmm. and you are the voice in that commercial yes i am you are the you are the first voice that we hear in the most viewed episode of friends of all time i could not believe it I like, oh i didn't know that <laughs> wait say say that again yeah. uh, that's the most viewed episode so, of friends so they they aired that episode it's called the one after the super bowl and they aired that one at the beginning of 96 after super bowl 30 to sort of keep the audience carried over from the super bowl to the friends episode and it was a very special episode went for an hour had a lot of guest stars julia roberts john john claude van damme but in the episode yeah the character ross his uh his monkey marcel is in a commercial selling beer and the episode begins with this super bowl commercial selling this beer and you are the voiceover in that commercial oh great Oh, yeah, I kind of remember it, but uh, yeah, I remember the name of the one after the Super Bowl, and that's uh, oh, yeah. that, that's that's a cool little thing. If if I add that to two nickels, I can get a dime for it. I'm pretty sure. Well, fi- over <laughs> over 57 million people tuned into that episode. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, that's awesome. Well, that's some good trivia. Yeah, it is. The who's who's the first voice you hear in the episode? But the thing is, now that I do this show with you, I watch things now. And I go. Is that Jim? It's like I listen out for you now. And when I was watching, I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, can't be. No, no, can't be. And I watched, I was like, oh my goodness, it is Jim Cummings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I show up in a lot of weird places, that's for sure. It, it's just, it's incredible, really, when you think about it. Your, your resume, there's no way all of your credits are on your resume. I just think you've done that many things. It, there's got to be some roles out there that, you know, you've, you've been on TV or movies that you just haven't been credited for, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, you're right about that actually. Yeah, I, I don't know how, how people keep up on that. Christmas time was all done and dusted, then we had New Year's. Did you guys do anything special for New Year's Eve? Uh yeah, yeah, just spent spent it with some friends. My friend has a has a little uh, a company that he runs and they had like a a, brothel? a little party at their <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it's a, it's a cigar company. Oh, cool. And so they had a little party at their cigar lounge and got together with a bunch of friends and had a good time. Nice one. I took my kids to see fireworks for the very first time and I filmed them as they witnessed fireworks for the first time, just seeing their little eyes just go, whoa. <laughs> it was just, oh, it was their first time. Never had never seen fireworks before in their life in person, on TV, obviously, but in person. It was just a really cool experience seeing uh, seeing my kids just see fireworks for the first time. It was just, it was, it was nice, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. It was very special. What about you, Jim? I'm sure you just got absolutely drunk and just, partied. Oh, God, and... yes. Absolutely <laughs> not at all. Um, yeah, it was just, just kind of laid back, you know, uh, at, yeah. at a whole different time zone, a whole different, you know, everything. We ended up uh, kind of going to bed early and checked out Simon's Town, which is a, a very cool yep. situation. And, uh, you know, it just landed back down here, you know, still. Let's let's talk about that though. So you've you've been in South Africa for a few weeks mm-hmm. now. How has South Africa been? It's just sort of a nice getaway, I'm assuming. I mean, the water looks lovely there. Oh just, yeah. Just, I can hear the ocean in the background. It just it just seems like such a relaxing place to be. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I keep waiting for a, a whale, and I'm disappointed every day. But that's okay. We'll, we'll we'll keep keep looking. But yeah, it's it's just beautiful. You know, and getting some nice things done, getting into a good headspace, as they say. And, uh, you know, working on some things, taking some time out, you know, to catch up with the things that I wanted to catch up with. And um, and uh, it's just great, you know, working on uh, some art and, uh, you know, hopefully some some surprises coming up. So stay tuned. Yeah, lots of surprises <laughs> coming up. Yeah. How's the food been? Oh, very good. Very good. Unbelievable. You know, some of the... the the different meals that we've had here are astonishing, you know, and, and things that don't even have meat in them, which is amazing for me because <laughs> I'm a carnivore, <laughs> you know, but, uh, being a hyena and all, yeah, yeah being a hyena and all, uh, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. But it's, it's great, great stuff, you know, and, uh, Chris's younger sister lives here, Katrina, you know, and she's been doing some modeling here. So it's kind of cool. She, she lives here. And uh, she's been kind she of. She lives our, there full time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of wow. our, our resident uh, native, <laughs> resident you know, yeah. <laughs> person who knows where the hell she's going. So that's that's a beautiful thing. That's very handy to have. Yeah, she knows the local places. Oh so. yeah. And just so you know, the water is really, really perfect. So come on down. You won't freeze to death at all. Just kidding. Yes, you will. This is some cold ass water. <laughs> it is cold. You are not going. Yeah. To, you got to earn it. What do you like with water? Are you a good swimmer? Who I'm just fine, but not in not if I'm bumping into ice cubes, you know, in the water. Because time to get out. <laughs> yeah, the water's freezing. Yeah, out there. there's an iceberg behind in the behind you. You don't want to. No, don't do it. Have you gone to Table Mountain, Jim? Uh, yes. Yeah, we were there. Went up, uh, and uh, it was unbelievably crowded because it was still during the summer. You know, when everybody was out, and, and there were. There were whole school buses of kids there. And I was like, okay, maybe yeah. maybe mm. next time we'll be, you know, unbelievable. Kids. Ugh. Who'd have them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're everywhere. No matter where you go, it's terrible. Just kidding. It's so funny because when we went to the States on our honeymoon, I was telling Jim earlier, but we went to Disneyland and Disney World, and there's people walking around with the prams and kids in prams, and I'm thinking, oh, get out of the way. Like, yeah. Now I'm thinking... We're going to be those people. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's just funny how yeah. life just, yeah, the, the, the circle of life, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I was just going to ask on the on the topic of South Africa. When I visited there, it was such a culture shock for me with the load shedding. How's that load shedding experience been for you? Has it affected you much? You know, I'm going to knock on wood when I uh, answer that because we've been expecting it here, there, and I think it might have happened once. Uh, yeah, oh, really? because we've had, the, they've been warnings. Okay. From 10 to five. And I mean, you know, noon to five, that's, uh, that just kills your day. Um, you, you know, they've been predicting it. And so we're kind of prepared for it and we're looking around and everything's still going. And, you know, I'll knock on wood when I say that, but so far so good. Do you want to explain to the listeners who may not know what load shedding is? Yes. That's when, uh, they just turn off all the power. You have no power. Mm. 
you know, I think there's like one or two things that they leave on, like your freezer or something such as that. And, and it's set for those type of things. But, uh, but no, it's you're if it's getting dark and you're watching your TV show, well, you're not now <laughs> you're, you're waiting till five in the morning or whenever one o'clock in the morning when it comes back on. So I don't know. I guess it's all in the in, in uh, service to the grid. What are you going to do? I'm assuming you've been to South Africa a few times. Any of your sister lives there, Chris? Uh, I've only been once. I've okay. only been once last year. And uh, yeah, the, my biggest culture shock was the load shedding, hence my question, because I just couldn't believe. And for the listeners, load shedding is, I mean, just to elaborate, it's it's because the South African government and the country can't afford to keep the electricity on in the entire country for the whole day. So there's vast parts of South Africa yeah. that just have to turn off the power to the extent that even street lights and traffic signals are shut down. I mean, businesses can't accept credit cards, no electronic payments for hours a day. And it all depends on the, the region that you're in. But I mean, it's it was just mind blowing to me that they couldn't even have power to the street lights and the traffic. They had to have traffic guards daily to direct traffic. And it was just such a culture shock to me. It was mind blowing that and how cold the water is like yeah. Jim alluded to. I, uh, you know, my naivete, I'm thinking Africa, you know, the water is going to be warm and tropical and it was the coldest water I've ever been in my life. Yeah. So what, what about security alarms and things like that? You think they'd have to, there'd be a lot of looting if the power's been turned off, right? Well, there's a lot of generators. So far, so good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But you, you'd be the one looting, wouldn't you, Jim? Uh, yeah, I'm, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that uh, hole in the wall gang. <laughs> that would that would be a visual. Jim on the, Jim yeah. running behind the news reporter with a, with a fridge on his shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. Maybe not. So what um what were both of your New Year's resolutions if you had one? Did you have any, or was it just the New Year? For me, geez, yeah, I had uh, well, um, well to uh, not put up with yahoos, and uh, <laughs> you know, you know what? If if people want to be in your life, let them in your life. If they're if they're beautiful and sweet yeah. and kind, and uh, you know, you got to know what you know, and. Uh, Listen to your inner self. Your instincts are your best instincts, I always say. And uh, keep one foot in front of the other and don't screw up. Yeah. What about you, Chris? I actually didn't have a resolution this year. No, I didn't I didn't make a resolution. Yeah. How about you, Brent? Well, my resolution was to um listen to Jim and yourself talk to Ron Perlman, which is going to be coming up soon, thankfully. Oh, so we'll that's see. already come true. <laughs> wow. That, there's a segue for you, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you do it. Lots of episodes coming up here on Tune with Jim Cummings, some very exciting ones. So we've got Ron Perlman in the can, Jess yes. Harnell, who we've already mentioned numerous times on this podcast, is going to be joining in the show. Mm -hmm. um, Walter Jones, the Black Power Ranger. We've got Chris Judge from Stargate and whatnot, and mm -hmm. and just so many more episodes. Yes, it's going to be such a um, such a fun time here in 2024 on Tune with Jim Cummings. So do support the show, help us kick the, kick the lights on here. You can support us on Patreon, but yeah. But with, with, um, with South Africa, Jim, so... The Hyenas, I'm assuming you've gone to see the Hyenas. That's the thing that's on everyone's mind. You know, Ed, you were Ed and the Lion King. Uh, Have yes. you gone to see the Hyenas yet? Uh, no, but they've come to see me. They've stopped by. They come by for tea. Every morning we have tea. And uh, it's, a, okay, man, I might be making this up. But uh, <laughs> no, actually, so far, so good. Uh, a few baboons. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like downtown, sitting there going. Wow. Holding babies up on the rooftops. Uh, them, that too. Yeah, they're they're live and kicking. You know, we're visiting them. They're, yeah. they're not visiting us. I've heard they can be quite ferocious if you get in their territory. They're very territorial, I've heard. Yeah, I, I didn't see it this time, but the one time I was here a long time ago, I saw a, a big fight between these two guys who mm. were obviously trying to be dominant, and it was the nastiest yeah. thing you ever saw. You know, a baboon fight? Ooh, don't get, you know, don't get in the middle. All righty. Well, we did throw out on the social media at Jim Cummings Acme and at Jim Cummings Pod asking for some uh, questions for the mailbag. So you can also send your questions through to Jim Cummings Podcast at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with the show. But uh, the first question I got for you here, Jim, this one comes from at Lego Iago, and they want to know what is your favorite Saturday morning breakfast cartoon show? 
What's the show you used to watch growing up on? I know you said you used to watch Looney Tunes. What's a show you used to watch on Saturday mornings eating your, your breakfast? Huh. Let's see. Well, when I was very, very little, uh, Howdy Doody was on, I think. I remember it for a little, you know, a uh, little bit. And then I liked a show that nobody will remember because it was called Calvin and the Colonel. Uh, Heckle and Jekyll were very big. I loved them. Um, Tom and Jerry were cool. And, you know, I liked Mighty Mouse. Here I come to save the day. That guy. <laughs> I, I thought he was cool as hell. And uh, But there was a show called, um, yeah, it was called Calvin and the Colonel. And I thought it was really cool because it sounded like everybody in my neighborhood. And I found out later they took it off the air because it was a cartoon version of Amos and Andy, which uh, really, yeah, it was, you know, a comedy duo from back in the 30s, I think, 30s or 20s or 30s. And um, and, uh, and it turned out that one of them was a white guy playing a black guy. And so that was controversial. But that this was a cartoon of that. And I thought it, I thought they just sounded cool. Calvin and the Colonel. And uh and Calvin was sort of talking like this. And it didn't occur to me it was a, a black guy or a white guy. I thought he was like a colonel, like like Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, really, because, and I think he was. But uh, but that was, yeah, because we were talking about that. And then Beanie and Cecil. I, I don't know if anybody remembers that out there, because that was an I old know that one. A Bob Clam pet cartoon. <clears throat> and it was really cool and it and it was very uh inside and they had a lot of inside humor there like they were going to the green witch island greenwich uh, the green witch village with greenwich village ah, ha, ha. you know and it it, it kind of it's kind of corny now but it was really hip for its time and beanie and cecil that was another one and heckle and jekyll beanie and cecil yeah and who else uh like i said mighty mouse but yeah, there were a lot, you know, all the cool Looney Tunes and all the cool how-to movies with Goofy in them. Those were good. The shorts. Well, the were they? So they were quite popular, were they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good stuff. I mean, obviously, being a 90s kid, being a 90s kid, I essentially grew up watching you on Saturday mornings. But what about you, Chris? Uh, I've said it before on the podcast. I didn't really watch you weren't allowed, were you? Saturday morning. It was, we only had an hour of hour a day of uh like media and me and my brother usually just use that on video games we were big gamers wow so that included video game time as well holy moly yeah yeah one hour yeah video games or tv and it, we might have we would usually try and sneak video games in the morning and then like uh afternoon pokemon and um uh i forget what came on after pokemon Oh, I can't remember, but yeah, Pokemon we had like was we had po- we had Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. That was that was like the double header. Oh we used to yeah, have. yeah, Dragon Ball Z there for you go. sure. Dragon Ball Z, and then like yeah, I remember watching like Doug, mm-hmm. and like Totally Spies, uh, and Kim Possible. There was, was this, that like, she in there? Skateboarding that? cartoon, but it, it was really just like you know, yeah, just catching whatever was on in that yeah. allotted time. The next one comes from at Bolin810. What do I have to say, Chris? I love your role as Dr. Robotnik on Sonic, and that's my favorite cartoon version of the character. As far as recording, did Jaleel White record with you guys, and did you get to meet him since that was the height of him as Steve Urkel? Yes, it was. Uh, and yeah, he yeah we met many times. Uh, a lot of times he'd be there, and a lot of times he wouldn't. But um, Robotnik wasn't in every single show, I don't think. So, um, you know, oftentimes I would run a digital. He, he was a nice guy. And uh, it was funny because uh, at the very first show, they, the writers were there. And uh, it'd be funny if Jalil remembered this, but they were trying to make him sound like a surfer, you know. And, um, and they, they were, yeah, God, I'm trying to think. There was a line that uh, Sonic was supposed to say, dude, yeah, that's awesome. But, you know, that's really swag, man. It really lags. And it's re- and it's all this lame duck surfer crap. And he goes, 
and you know, and he's a proud young black man. And he goes, man, I ain't saying this bullshit. You know, I, you know, and it was like, whoa, okay, there you go. He goes, he said, no, he's gonna, he's me out there like, a, let, let me tell you what it's up, you know, and he, and and he kind of rewrote the line. And they're going, okay, you know, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna, you're not gonna get uh, get testy with Urkel. I can tell you that. Exactly. You know, yeah, he's Urkel. He knows what's up. But uh, yeah, he was a great guy, and I I thought he did a bang up job. Obviously, everybody else did too. Yeah, that show was a lot of fun. Well, I've just added Julia White to our potential guest list for the show. Yes, so we'll see I if hope we can get so. him on and feature episode. That would be great. Twenty twenty four. This next one here comes from at real John David twenty four. Would you ever return to the Transformers franchise if they gave you a call to do more new characters? Only if they gave me a call to do more new characters. And if it was for money. <laughs> and if it was for money, yes. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. I think you're onto something. I should be writing this down. Yes. Okay. I think I think I've got it. Okay. okay thanks. Okay. Thanks for the question. The answer is yes. At O oh bother two zero two three. Yeah. So this one we we uh, talked about a little bit earlier in this episode. What was it like doing Eeyore in Very Merry Poo Year? I'm gl- I'm so glad you scored the job for Pooh and Tigger, but you did a mean Eeyore too. I'm going to look this up because Jim thinks he didn't do it. It'd just be funny if he actually did. (laughs) Yes, it really would be. And I can tell you the only reason that it would have been is if somebody was sick or something. And if he only had one line. No, no. Eeyore was Peter Cullen. Eeyore was Peter Cullen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That sounds about right. I wonder where they got the idea that you did Eeyore in that one. Anyway. That person's going to show up to your next convention and give you a detailed <laughs> list. <laughs> actually, here, here's why you're wrong. Actually, Jim. What? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jim. I wasn't born yet, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure someone's given them false uh, facts there. But unfortunately, no, Eeyore was, well, not unfortunately, but Eeyore was uh, recorded and voiced by the one and only Peter Cullen in A Very Merry Poo. Yeah, another man who I feel we should need to get on the podcast soon as well. Peter Cullen, let's add him to the list as well. Why not? Yeah, let's do. At Jason Ball 34 was there ever talk of a sequel to the live action Christopher Robin movie? They loved that movie and they thought that you did an amazing work in it, as did everybody. Oh, well, good. Well, yeah, I I sure loved it. I mean, I, I nothing to do with me being in it. I just thought it was a really good movie. Um, and you know, I, it's funny. I, I don't, I don't know of one single person other than us who are even talking about it, but I, I, you know, your mind just kind of goes here and there. And I thought that an interesting way to get into it is that Maddie grows up. And because after all, this was set, look, look at the time setting that, that this was originally set in and, uh, it gives her time to grow up. And have her own problems and, you know, f- fill in the blank. And the gang, the 100 Acre yeah. Wood Gang, comes up and helps her with that and gets her through that. And uh, hopefully she's married with child at the time. And that kid, see, then 30 years from now. Anyway, you see where I'm going with this. Anyway, I, I think we should uh, do a sequ- sequel with uh, Maddie. Oh yeah, uh, they're all about they're all about and it, like short series now. Netflix and things, aren't they? I feel like a, a, a short series would work better, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, I just saw that they they released this. Uh, you remember the movie Ted with Mark Wahlberg oh, yeah. and Seth yeah. MacFarlane? Yeah, yeah, where he's the yes. teddy bear. They they have a Hulu series now. It's a television series. To Ted? Yeah. Good for them. So I mean, it's it's definitely possible. I mean, it, the reason I think of that is because you know. The, the live animation yeah. with the, well, the plus, mixture of acting. The zitgeist kind of gets together and it, it all blends together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like the, the medium of, you know. Let's just push it out into the universe. Push it out into the universe. <laughs> live action TV series. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Mark Forster, if you're listening. Mark Forster. <laughs> yeah, that's true, huh? <laughs> yeah, and he is listening. All right. And final question here from Adam Goncalves. Are you going to interview any more voice actors? I believe we might be, as we've already mentioned, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's always a slim chance. So stay tuned. T-O-O-N-E-D. Yeah, people don't um, think of Ron Perlman as voice actor, but of course, you know, he was in Bonkers. So, you oh, know, yeah. Ron Perlman, yeah. of course, and Jess Harnell, one of the most acclaimed voice actors ever. Walter oh, Jones, yeah. Black Power Ranger, Chris Judge, as we said, voice of... Who is, the, who is he the voice of, Chris? 
Kratos in the reboot of God of War franchise. Yes. Yeah. Very, very big deal. But, you know, very, very we've actually big been deal. Um, working on, I could, probably, I could probably say it on the show now, we want to touch on a goofy movie. So I thought, what would be better than, you know, just having Jim talk about a goofy movie than by getting uh, Rob Paulson and by getting Bill Farmer and Jason Marsden, everyone, the cast, all in the one room, all on the same Zoom call, whatever, mm-hmm. talking about the movie. So that's going to be happening in a few weeks as well. So I'm very, very excited for that one. But yeah, lots of big names coming here on Tune In with Jim Cummings. So support the show, as we said, on Patreon. You can also get exclusive content, including audio commentaries of all your favorite old Disney afternoons TV shows like Tailspin and Dark Wind Dark and Bonkers, where Jim goes back with the characters from the show that he voiced, and we do some audio commentaries there. Plus, you also get early and ad-free access to this show. So no pesky ads. You get to listen to this and you get it a week early. So you get to hear it before anybody else. Plus, there's prize draws and there's bonus mailbags and so much more by supporting the show for as little as just $1 per month. You can do that. So head to patreon.com slash Jim Cummings podcast. Also, follow the show on social media at Jim Cummings pod and follow Jim on all his social medias as well. He is at Jim Cummings Acme on Twitter and at Jim J Cummings on all the other social medias, whether it be uh, Instagram or TikTok. TikTok, you name it, at Jim J. Cummings. And if you want to get in touch with the show, it is Jim Cummings Podcast at gmail.com. And we'd love if you could please uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to this show. Check us five stars and leave us a few kind words as well. We do appreciate it. But this has been our little holiday return to the show of Tune In with Jim Cummings. Thank you for listening to the show. It's been much appreciated. Chris, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We've had a great time with this show. It's been a pleasure. Hey, amen. And thank you, Jim. And happy days to everybody. And let's do this again this year. As in 2024, God yes. bless each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's do it again. We'll catch you in the next episode here of Tuned In with Jim Cummings. 